pickled lemon and rosemary lamb chops. That's right, I couldn't decide between an Indian technique and an Italian technique, so I decided to use both. And the results? Extreme grilled lamb deliciousness. So let me show you how to do this. Step one, we're going to put together the yogurt. And yogurt being the Indian technique we're borrowing here. That's what makes all those tandoori recipes so delicious. To that, we're going to add some freshly grated lemon zest and freshly squeezed lemon juice and a good amount of it. And that spoon worked great for getting the yogurt into the bowl, but now its usefulness has come to an end. So I'm going to switch to a whisk. And now that we have the right tool for the job, we're going to go ahead and spice this up a little bit with a big spoon of chilies. I'm using Calabrian chilies. You could use sambal, or you could use any kind of diced hot pepper. It doesn't really matter, but you want some heat. Then we're going to add a nice big pinch of cinnamon. It's going to give it a little underlying sweetness. I really like what that does with lamb. We're also going to put in a big pinch of dry oregano and a large amount of freshly minced rosemary. All right, we're going to give that a stir. And that's pretty much the base of the marinade. Now you can season marinades with salt and pepper or you cannot and just season the meat. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and put the salt and pepper right in. So a generous amount of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and that's looking good. So once your marinade's done, you're gonna go ahead and throw your loin lamb chops in a plastic bag. Be sure you're using loin chops. See that, it looks like a T-bone steak. That's what you want. If you see the ones that have the small little eye of meat and the long bone, that's a rib chop. Not as good. And make sure they're nice and thick, at least an inch thick. All right. So we're going to throw those in the bag. We're going to dump in the marinade. And at this point, I was thinking, this looks like it's missing something. And then I realized I never put the garlic in. So I'm going to throw some crushed garlic in here. All right. So thank God I caught that. That would have been tragic. And I mean that literally. And then before this goes in the fridge, we have to give it a very, very thorough massage to make sure those lamb chops are completely coated. I really want you to do this vigorously and enthusiastically. In fact, if someone's watching you, it should be awkward. All right, so really work it over. And once you're convinced it's thoroughly combined and evenly distributed, go ahead and seal the bag and throw it in the refrigerator for four hours. Sure, you can go a little shorter or a little longer, but I'm recommending four. So I got a few hours to kill. Let's see, what should I do while I wait? Anyway, let me have a cold one and mull that over. Oh, and by the way, Belgian beer companies that could have been mentioned in this video, give me a call, let's chat. All right, four hours later, I was ready to grill. And all you have to do to get these ready is take them out of the marinade, scrape off the excess, and that's it. And of course, there's going to be a little marinade on the surface, but that's what you want. So that's looking good. We're going to head out to the grill that's, of course, already been preheated. And by that, I mean the coals have been started early. All right, they're all white. There's no flames. People, stop putting meat on top of flames. It doesn't taste good. I didn't season mine because I had a good amount of salt and pepper in the marinade, but that's up to you. And I really wish I could give you times here, but you know I can't. It's going to depend on your grill and the size of your lamb, etc. But really just treat it like you're cooking a steak. All right, use a thermometer if you have to. I pull mine off about 130, 135. I like it nice and pink and juicy. And of course, you know I encourage playing with your meat on the grill. Once both sides are seared and have released from the grill, you can turn it over all you want. As long as both sides cook evenly, you're totally allowed to turn it around and move them around. That's half the fun. So at this point, I determined mine to be just about right. By the way, little tip here, if you have a couple that are a little bigger, the most rare part's going to be next to the bone. So I like to just flip them up on the end and give them a couple extra minutes that way. That way the thick end finishes cooking a little bit without overcooking the pointy end. All right, I'm going to pull those off. I'm going to head inside. Yes, of course, you have to let these rest. Why? I can't explain that again. Just do it. So we're going to let those rest five or six minutes while we set up our plate. I'm just going with a simple salad. And you don't need any sauce for these. They are so juicy and flavorful. All I do is spoon a little bit of the natural juice over that's going to form on the plate as these rest. And that is a beautiful plate of grilled loin lamb chops. And again, we've basically combined my two favorite grilled lamb techniques, the kind of Italian-ish lemon, garlic, rosemary treatment. Plus, we borrowed that Indian technique of the yogurt marinade, and it really did come out super, super delicious. All right, let me cut into this. Oh my God. Look at that. Pink, juicy perfection. And by the way, it's totally okay not to like medium rare lamb. To each his own. But don't waste your money on this cut if you like your meat well done. Get a lamb shank and braise it for four hours, and you can have delicious lamb without eating dry, tasteless meat. So this technique and this cut of lamb is really designed for a medium rare. All right. And of course, I'm pretty sure if you don't eat lamb at all, this would work fantastic on some half chickens, 
maybe some pork chops. I have a hard time believing this marinade wouldn't be delicious on many things. So I really hope you give this a try.